previously on the Sega Holic. You have found a Sega Holic where ESD safety is a top priority. This is episode 70. Savers Rescue Part 4 Thermal Paste Replacement. Before we can apply thermal paste, obviously we're gonna have to take off the heat sinks. I use a spudger, prying away from the heat sink, avoiding bending the heat sink spins. Sometimes the clamp comes off prying only on one side, but other times you may need to pry on both sides. This heat sink is for the GPU. Use a heat gun or hair dryer to warm up the heat sink to avoid damaging the CPU's heat spreader as it may be stuck to the heat sink. Be careful when using a heat gun or hair dryer as they can cause static. Just twist back and forth to break the bond. This version 1.4 mainboard's GPU has the black thermal paste which comes off a whole lot easier than the alternative white thermal paste that you may find. To remove the CPU heatsink, first lift the clamp's lever, then use a spudger to pry the lever away from the heatsink using the black plastic as leverage. Make sure that while prying, you pull up on the clamp. The CPU heatsink is easier to remove and does not require heating. Just twist back and forth. The CPU uses the much harder to remove white thermal paste, which has the consistency of sun-dried chewing gum. This CPU had the black thermal paste and is the main board from episode 67, 68, and 69. Use IPA to remove the thermal paste. White thermal paste was used on a GPU. I use turtle wax scratch and swirl remover to help break down the paste. Then use a toothpick to remove chunks of the paste. You can also heat up the paste with a heat gun to make the paste more viscous and use a paper towel to wipe it off. I made sure not to rub the solder resist areas with the scratch remover and only used it on the heat spreader. I then used IPA to remove the last remnants of the thermal paste. By the way, I had to use a different main board for the removal of the heat sinks as I lost video files of that footage because I accidentally deleted the files. Removal of the thermal paste requires a lot of patience and in real time, it took me about 45 minutes to one hour to thoroughly clean the CPU and GPU. They need to be super clean before reapplying the new thermal paste. And also, we need to clean both heat sinks. Again, use a heat gun to make the paste more viscous. For thermal paste, I have the Noctua NTH1, Arctic MX2, and Arctic 
MX4. I chose the Arctic MX4 because it has better thermal performance than the MX2 and lasts 8 years of use compared to 3 years of use for the NTH1. Although the NTH1 doesn't need a burn-in time, while the MX2 is the cheapest of the three while still having good thermal performance. All three are electrically non-conductive so you don't have to worry about causing shorts. On this bigger sized chip, I chose to apply the paste using the X method. As with the two other thermal paste, the MX4 is easy to apply and all share the same type of viscosity. Noctua recommends to twist the heatsink back and forth for the NTH1, but it's what I do for all thermal paste. When replacing the GPU heatsink clamp, make sure the lever points toward the rear of the board, towards the fan, otherwise the disk drive won't fit in correctly. For the CPU, I chose the rice method. And for the heatsink clamp, the lever points toward the front of the board. If you have tips on easier clamp or paste removal or paste application, please leave them in the comments section below. Anyways, that's it for now. Subscribe so you know when the next episode, a full teardown of the Xbox, is released. See you next time. Aloha.